Uh, hello friends welcome to today's machine learning class and in this class we will start our supervised learning. The first topic is learning a class from examples. So under this we will see the difference between traditional and machine learning model and what is the traditional model and what is the machine learning model. After that what is supervised learning ok this is very important here. So after that we will learn learning a class from samples here we will take the family car sample. family car sample. Next day the important variables x, r and hypothesis of x all those things we will see. After that what is false positive, what is false negative then experimental errors that is empirical error and most general and most specific hypothesis that is what is generalization, what are the specialization all these things we will learn in today's class right. Uh, before entering into supervised learning model, it is important to know the difference between traditional method and machine learning method. Okay. In traditional system, we have to give the input and the procedure to our application or model, is not it? So, after that the model will produce our output, the given output. Okay. This is what the traditional model will do. But when come to machine learning, first we have to give a sample input, a sample input as well as the correct output for this sample. Both we have to give this model and the model what will do? It will do the mapping function between this input and output and then that generates the algorithm. Okay. So, the machine learning model will produce the algorithm for the input that is the selected sample input and the corresponding output then it will produce an algorithm. This is what the difference between traditional model and machine learning model right. And next we will move to supervised learning. In the supervised learning a model is getting trained on labeled data set ok. Here the labeled data set is very important ok. The data set may be either uh, structured data, unstructured data or semi-structured data but the data should have label. By means of this label only the learning model will get trained ok and it is a process of providing input data as well as the correct output data that is sample input data. Sample input data and the corresponding output data will be given to this model then the supervised learning algorithm is to find the mapping function to map the input with the output. This is called as supervised learning. In supervised learning we are having a huge data set. This is data set. The data set will be divided into two parts. The first one is training data and second one is testing data. Okay, the size of training data is small. Actually this is small when compared to test data because this is a sample data, sample data and correct data ok, pre-processed data right ok. This sample data is called as training data which is used to, to train the model ok. So, training data set is used to, to train the model that is uh, will that will produce the mapping function from input and output ok. So, this will produce a model that is algorithm that algorithm then we need to test this model by using the validation function that is validation data. By using the validation data we need to test this particular model once the model got tested then we have to apply this test data to this model to get the result ok and that result should be 99% uh, accurate result ok. So, to determine the accuracy we need to validate this particular model ok. So, this is called as supervised learning. So, in the supervised learning we are having training data as well as testing data. Training data is used to, to train the model and test data is used to, to test this model right. 
next let us move learning a class from samples right here we are having a huge collection of cars and people are there and people are there so the people are going to collect uh, that is select a car from this cars class okay and they have selected only the family car family car so here we are having uh, two classes first one is family car family car and second one is not a family car family car not a family car okay so the people believe certain cars are family car and the others are not a family car okay so what is the class here we are having class c the class c is nothing but family car we never bother about the other type of cars okay so with this example we will go further okay now we are having a set of cars that is called as family car that will come under class c c is nothing but car okay here a family car or not is designed by defined by the attribute price and engine power by using price and engine power we can decide whether the car is family car or not okay the all the other attribute we can omit those are irrelevant to our sample now if it is a family car then this is positive sample otherwise it will be a negative sample right and now let us try to plot a graph for our family car here x coordinate represent the price and this y coordinate represent the engine power okay based on the value of price and engine power these are the cars these are plotted here based on the value okay so the x coordinate represent the price and y coordinate represent the engine power here the plus are positive samples and these are all family cars these are all nothing but family cars okay and all the other cars are not family car simply right and the variable x and r are very important here price as the first input attribute that is x1 in rupees for example and next one is the engine power is the second attribute x2 so based on this x is nothing but a car the car should have price and engine power that is x value x1 value and x2 value and next the r uh, the variable r if r value is 1 then x is a positive sample positive sample means family car family car if r value is 0 then this is a negative sample that is it is not a family car right okay each car is represented by the ordered pair of x comma r okay and the training set contains n such samples so first we will take only n number of cars for train our model okay x is nothing but our car the car should have two variables x and r x t t means nothing but training set okay training set that starts from 1 to n because total number of uh, total number of training set are n okay x t comma r t right t is the index of training set and next one is the sample of hypothesis okay now we need to find whether the car is family car or not by using the price and engine power attribute okay and here after some time the people decide the range for the engine power as well as the price okay if the price value between p1 to p2 then we can consider this particular car is family car and the engine power is, so that should be between e1 and e2 then the car is family car okay now between these two we are having this square okay and inside we are having only positive samples positive samples and the other side are negative samples right okay 
here the hypothesis h belongs to h specifies a particular quadruple of p1 hypothesis of p1 p2 e1 and e2 okay i have to approximate the c that is the range of engine power e1 to e2 and price p1 to p2 okay the hypothesis h makes the prediction for an instance x that as if hypothesis of x which is equal to 1 then h classifies x as positive sample that means the the sample which is inside the square and if hypothesis of h value is 0 then it is classified as a negative sample that uh, that is in outside the rectangle right ok when come to real life we do not know the class c this is the original class original hypothetic class ok but when we train our machine we will get this particular h ok initially we train our machine with this hypothesis then we will get this particular h class right but the original class is c hence there is a difference between these two because h is approximate to this particular c hence it is having some error region see these regions are actually the error region right ok now let us see the false positive and false negative ok see the particular c is the original actual class and h is the hypothesis class that our machine trained now ok the point where c is 1 but h is 0 the point where c is 1 and h is 0 is false negative see c is 1 h is 0 this region this region are false negative right and the point where c is 0 but h is 1 is false positive see here c is 0 but the h value is 1 this area are false positive ok and the true positive and true negatives are correctly classified ok so this area are true positive and outside are true negative right so this is false positive and false negative the next one is error now we are going to predict our experimental error from our sample ok the predicted value is h when the h value do not map our original x value then error occurred ok so e means error that is we need to compute the error of the predicted value of x hypothesis of x which is equal to for all training samples 1 to n h of x t t means training sample ok so the hypothesis of x which is not equal to r t ok we have already seen hypothesis of x equal to 1 means this is positive sample and if the hypothesis of x which is equal to 0 means negative sample and already we know the variable r is 1 means this is positive if r value is 0 then this is negative if these two values are not mapped then we can compute that error as occurred ok so we are going to predict the error value based on the coordinate values that is the price 1 price 2 and engine power 1 engine power 2 by using these four coordinate only we need to compute the values whether these are um, positive or negative positive samples or negative samples if the predicted value is not mapped to the original value then error occurred here the error is nothing but epsilon the epsilon value should be less than or equal to c x r h c x r h c is nothing but the original class and h is the predicted class by our machine trained machine ok so the error region is computed by c x r h ok 
and next one is the most general and most specific hypothesis. First let us see what is generalization it is how well our hypothesis will correctly classify future examples that are not part of training set ok. So, that will come under actually testing set. So, this is called as generalization there should not be any error while giving the training set the, sorry while giving the testing set then that is called as generalization. Now, let us see what is the most general hypothesis most general hypothesis is the largest rectangle largest rectangle. So, this is the most the outside rectangle ok this area is the generalization the outside portion ok which includes all positive samples and none of the negative samples all positive samples and none of the negative samples ok. So, this is G, G is the outermost rectangle is called as most general hypothesis it includes only positive samples and no negative samples will be actually included. And when come to the most specific hypothesis here the tightest rectangle is called as most specific hypothesis yes ok yes is nothing but the most tightest rectangle and this is more most specific hypothesis which includes all positive samples and none of the negative samples again ok. So, positive samples only allowed here and C is the original class and S should be less than the C, but it never greater than this particular C right. The next one is margin here margin is nothing but the distance between the boundary and the instance closest to it is called as margin ok. So, here this is the instance how to compute the margin the instance closest to G generalization is called as margin here ok. We have to consider only this particular region from this instance. So, this is called as margin. So, up to this we have seen the supervised learning. In the supervised learning the first lesson is learning a class from samples. So, up to this we have seen the first thing uh, we learned the difference between traditional and machine learning model then what is supervised learning then the important variables that come under the learning class from examples that is x, r and uh, hypothesis of x all those things and uh, false positive false negative then experimental error that is empirical errors epsilon then most general and most specific hypothesis that is specialization and generalization of the samples from the given example right. So, these are the topics we have seen and thank you.